Ndi Madakwana, President Ramaphosa. I don't know whether you have uh, seen any of these um, videos. I've, I've put them on my YouTube channel. They haven't exactly gone viral, uh, but that's okay. I'm, I'm looking for just an audience of one, or maybe two. Uh, my wife watches them and uh, her support and counsel is very, very valuable to me. In, in Corsi Albert Lutuli, when he was, or when there was criticism in the local press about him being allowed to go overseas, they accused him of being spoiled. And he responded to that by saying, I was spoiled by being made in the image of God. From his very, very devout Christian biblical worldview, he knew that because he was made in the image of God, he was the equal of anybody else, and that he should have the freedom to enjoy the same rights and responsibilities of all South Africans. You know, in March last year, many of our freedoms that you fought for and many before you fought for, many of those freedoms were, were taken from us and some of them were understandable. Some of the, those restrictions were understandable at the time. But you made the statement back in March last year that it would just be a few weeks to flatten the curve. Well, you know, here we are 17 months later, and we're still in and out of these restrictions and lockdowns. We're still not free to enjoy what our constitution guarantees us. And so the question is, what is the end game here? Do you have one? Or do we just continue like sheep or slaves? following the rest of the world off a cliff. And you know, that is a very harsh imagery I'm using there, but if we can't make our own decisions, our own choices and, and think for ourselves, then what are we? But you know, not all countries have gone in this direction. There've been some notable exceptions. And I'll give you one, and that is Sweden, the country of Sweden. When the lockdown began in March, they decided that they were going to continue with the, what they had put in place to deal with the pandemic should it come. And they already had those plans in place to do that. And before they even knew about COVID. And they didn't implement these harsh lockdown measures. They did their best to keep business and industry going. They gave suggestions for how infections could be reduced. And over the last 18 months, they've had to reevaluate and make some adjustments. But of course, the international press went mad, accusing them of killing their own citizens. There's a, one of our headlines here, going back to July last year. And that picture is from April last year. Swedes sitting outside, enjoying a bit of sunshine. You remember what we were doing in April last year, I'm sure. But the media went crazy. Well, let's have a look at what happened in Sweden. From the Wildermeter, we look at their figures over the last 17 months. And just like countries around the world, their daily cases have gone up and come down. They've also had three waves, although the, the, very, the first wave was very limited. Let's look at their death figures, as tragic as these may be, daily deaths. And there again, we see that they had 
a couple of spikes during these waves, uh, reaching tragically about 100 people a day at two different stages of this lockdown. But let's do a bit. And so it looks very much like the rest of the world. In fact, let's have a look at how they have fared. Here's a chart of cases per million of their population. So the number of cases per million population over the last 17 months. And the worst in this chart is Luxembourg at 116,000 per million cases. And Sweden is in third place there. I've put us on the bottom where we're showing 41,000, only 41,000. But as we looked at, at on Monday night, that figure is meaningless. We're probably 600,000, 700,000 per million that have been infected by COVID. And so, and let's look at their deaths per million. So there again, compared to Northern European countries, other countries around them, they are in third place there and very, very close to many other countries, including ourselves. We're on 1,214 deaths per million of our population, Sweden on 1,438 per million of their population. And so what I want to point out is, although they never put these very harsh measures, lockdown measures in place, their numbers are no better and no worse than the average country surrounding them. So that's very interesting. And they've done that without destroying their economy. And, you know, just a few days ago, they announced they're down to zero deaths, no more deaths. You saw it from that chart that I showed you earlier on. And you know, I haven't seen anything in the media that says, you know, we were hysterical a year ago. We were extremely worried, but you know, we got it wrong. Let's, we need to re-evaluate. Quiet, I've heard nothing. Because nobody's prepared to admit anymore they got it wrong humility is a thing of the past a few days ago Gwedi Montashi in uh, the context of speaking about carbon energy generation very correctly made the statement South Africa is not Germany and of course we could equally say South Africa is not Sweden either but I have to know, are we ready and willing to learn from countries like that? Are we asking them questions? Yeah, from your experience, what would you say would be an, a, the safest possible way for us to get out of lockdown as quickly as possible, get our economy back in gear, start allowing industry and commerce to create jobs again. Are we prepared to do that? Are we doing that? Or are we quite content to just continue to follow the orders of our colonial masters in New York, Brussels, Beijing? Or are we going to break those shackles break away from the chain gang and start making decisions for ourselves. And President Ramaphosa, that requires leadership and a willingness to be criticized as Sweden were criticized heavily. Sir, I continue to pray for you. Very grateful for you. And as I say, I pray that somehow you'll get to see these short messages. And Kosi Sikeleli, Africa.